Christ and sincerity. Now, if you look at the life of Satan once again, you may discover that Satan, with all Satan inspired by conscience, conspired together to waste his life. To waste his life. You remember how he ran from place to place. And what you need to see at some Satan. If Satan has not been inspired, such opposition is very steady. At such a time, he would have been doing something more useful. Instead of just lying by the side of the mountain, instead of going to a cave, instead of running from place to place, running for his dear life. But even so, Satan, and all Satan is by circumstances and people, they all conspire together to waste his life. We never allow this. We never allow this. Then his life could have been wasted completely. And he could have lost a lot of opportunity to save and to help his own generation if he had allowed those things that came into his life. But he never allowed them. He was the <laughs> generation through it all and despite all odds. He had a life that has a record in the Word of God that he served his own generation. And the same thing you may discover in your life. If you have given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm sure you have, that's why you are here tonight, that's why you are one of the key leaders too, that you know the Lord as your personal Savior. Not only that, you have a consecration, a determination, that come what may, you want their single life to come for publishing the gospel, preaching the good tidings, telling people who are lost the way to the kingdom of God, and serving the Lord in your own life. But then, I'm, not, I'm sure that you know that the devil will not be particularly interested in that. He doesn't want you to get close to it. He doesn't want your life to come for spiritual things. He doesn't want you to take people from hell and take them to heaven. He doesn't want you to take people from their sin, from their evil, and bring them to the hands and the bosom of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, if he doesn't want it, he's going to fight against it. And he has all the weapons. He has so many people. And he has so many things he could do to fight against it. He might even use your own soul, your own mind, your own weaknesses. It might, might even use the sickness or use whatever he may want to use just to conspire together with all the people that submit and surrender to him that you will not do what you ought to do. But David had difficulties too. He had opposition too. He had influences too. He would not have been able to serve his own generation. Satan didn't want him to. Saul didn't want him to. The Philistines didn't want him to, but he did. And so, we do must make up our minds that this is a single life that we have. We're going to see that as much as possible. As much as possible. Souls will be saved through whatever we're able to offer unto the Lord. In John chapter 9. John chapter 9. We're looking at verse 4. It's a verse that is quite familiar to you, but we need to look at it again in the light of what we're talking about. John 9, 4. I must work the work of him that sent me while it is day. I must work the work of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh. When no man can work. Those are the very words of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ had a sense of mission in this world. He knew that ordinarily, normally, he wouldn't have been in the world. Co equal with the Father, King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Master of Angels, the one that had in eternity with God. From eternity past, yet he knew that the redemption of man was very necessary 
and he came just for that purpose. And he knew that when all things are said and done, that will prove to be the most essential thing. When all this world will have been forgotten, when the earth will have been burnt in fire, when the new day will rise, and when eventually human history will come to a particular definite point that will have to continue in the other end, he knew that the most important essential thing will be the redemption of mankind. And he came to this world, and he made sure that he addressed himself to that issue. He had a purpose for living. Only one life. And he did everything the Father wanted him to do. You will see that he defied all contrary conditions. There will always be contrary conditions. Because the devil knows the importance of this spiritual thing we're talking about, the salvation of the souls of men and women. But Jesus Christ defied all hindrances. You see, our problem is we do not defy all hindrances. Once there's a little hindrance or a big hindrance, we yield. We give up. We allow the hindrances to become bigger than our consecration. But Jesus defied all difficulties also. There were difficulties. He defied them. He defied them. He wouldn't allow them to hinder what he needed to do. There were religious disturbances. Religious disturbances. And yet through it all. And despite all of he still did what the Father wanted him to do. There was also planned opposition against Christ and against the ministry of Christ. But then his eyes were always fixed on him who had sent him. He said, I must work the work of him that sent me. I think sometimes we do not always think that God has sent us to do a particular thing, or to have a particular mission. And you must understand there is no small good thing in the sight of God. Just like you don't say, well, this is small thing. It doesn't matter. The same thing, you don't say, this is small good thing. It doesn't matter whether I do it or not. It's inconsequential whether I do it or not. Just like you cannot say, well, it's a small thing. Let me commit it. God wouldn't mind. Then also you cannot say, it's a small good thing, let me leave it undone. God will not mind. You will know that God has sent into this world to accomplish a particular thing. And you find out, you see, there are many possibilities that come every day. Then you find out which is the real essential thing. Which is the most essential thing. Which is the thing that will still count after about 50 years. The saving of souls. The preaching of the gospel, helping in every possible way so that people will know the Lord. Now we must believe that Jesus Christ, that we are sent here to do something very important. I must work. The works of him that sent me while it is day. Now Jesus knew that the time will soon be over. That's why I always said, my time is not here. My hour is not here. He knew that he had an appointed time. And all that appointed time is summed up as the day. While it is day. And uh, don't we know too that we also have the day of service. The day of activity. The day consecrated to the most essential thing. I'm not talking of the 24-hour day. I'm talking of your lifespan. While it is day, then he said, the night cometh when no man can work. That means all the essential things we really need to do, all eternally important things we need to do, this is the time to do them. As he feeds his eyes on, on, on God, who sent him, so we must feed our eyes on God. 
for saying all. Because Pharisees will try to disturb you if they can. Sadducees will try to hinder you if they can. In fact, some of your relatives will come to tell you that you are doing too much of this thing. If they can disturb you, they would like to disturb you. But Jesus Christ always keeps his eyes on the one who had sent him. And he said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. I want you to notice in that passage the works of him, plural. The works of him in the plural. And you know, he saved, he healed, he sought for the lost. And he did a lot of things. Eventually went to the cross and he died. And on the cross he gave himself for the salvation of the whole world. When we talk of the whole world, the whole world of his time. The whole world of ten years' time. The whole world of a hundred years' time. The whole world of a thousand years' time. The whole world until the world will last. Think about that. That you get something done. That even after you have left this thing, after you have left this environment, what you have done is still counting for the salvation of people. What you have done is still counting for the redemption of people. Because Jesus Christ concentrated on what was really essential. In Luke chapter 19, please turn the passage over. Luke chapter 19, verse 4. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. He knew why he came. And there are many people in our world who do not know why they came to this world. I'm sure that by now you know why we are here. You know why we are Christians. You know why we are in the kingdom of God? Mordecai was talking to Esther and said, Do you know, wherever you are in the kingdom for such a time as this, Esther wanted to give Mordecai a lot of excuses. The reason I can't do that now, the reason that is not permissible, the law of the land does not allow it. The king has not sent for me for some time now. If I do that, I'm just going to jeopardize my life. It's a dangerous thing to do now. The king will not understand. The whole palace will blame me. All kinds of excuses. But do you know whether you're in the kingdom for such a time as this? And I challenge Esther to do what you ought to do. And through that woman, for the grace of God and the wisdom of God too, the whole all the Jews of that time were scared and they did not die the death that had been planned for them. And do you know whether you are in the kingdom of God for such a time as this? Jesus said, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save. Not only to save, but to seek men, and then to save them, because they have been lost. Now, when did he say that? He said that in the midst of the murmuring of the people. If you look at verse 7 of that same chapter, chapter 19 of Luke, verse 7. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to the death with a man, that is, a sinner. They murmured. People are going to murmur against your Christian service. They're going to murmur against your endeavor to say so. Against the way you yield your life to ever your life and to develop people and to make sure that the work of the kingdom is done as it requires urgency and day. They're going to murmur, but in the midst of all the murmuring, Jesus said to the ministry of saving souls. And what a challenge to you and to me that in the midst of it all, the murmuring, the complaints, the opposition, the condemnation, 
or the misunderstanding, yet you are giving yourself to the saving of souls. Because of our time, let me just uh, read this passage to you before we pray. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter 5. From verse 13. Second Corinthians chapter 5. From verse 13. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God. Or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. You see what the accused fall of and receive is that they were mad men. They were not sensible. They were throwing away their lives. And they were endangering their lives. And that actually they were beside themselves. And then Paul said, maybe that is true. Whether we be beside ourselves, it is because of the sake of God. It's to God. Or whether we be sober or the reasonable, it says, it is for your cause. For the love of Christ constraineth us. The love of Christ constraineth us because the love of Christ, the love of Christ should constrain you. And you should also, like Paul the Apostle John, that if one died for all, then we are all dead. That henceforth, since he has died for you and he has died for me, we should no more live unto ourselves. But we should live unto him, unto God, who died, unto Christ, who died for us, and he rose again. The challenge we have tonight is that we should serve the Lord in this generation. Remember the words of that song we listened to before the message? Only one life. And it was soon over. It was soon to come. And only what is done for Christ will last. Are you doing something for Christ? And are you doing more every day? Or are you not doing less? Because of opposition? Because of misunderstanding? Because of the murmuring of the people? And because of the disturbances? And maybe because of the difficulties and the physical conditions in which we find ourselves in the economy at this particular time? Are you then withdrawing your service from the Lord? Or are you saying, I have only one life to live, and as Christ died for me, I'm willing to give all I am and all I have for the service of the Lord in this single generation. Tonight, even though we seem to be in a hurry, we should still have some time to pray. Or what do you think? Let's rise up then, and let's talk to the Lord in prayer, and tell God, this single life, this single life, this single life will be spent to the glory of God, to the saving of souls. And remember the souls in your district. to live. Only one life to live for the Lord. I know times are difficult. Many of us could not get transportation to come here today, but by the grace of God you pay. Keep on coming like that. One day God is going to reward everything that is done for the glory of his name. Only one life, only one life, use it and spend it to the salvation of souls.
call fish and will be there. If you call fish, may be there. He brought fish, may be there. Misunderstanding may come in even. But if there's only one life, let that life count to the salvation of souls.
God, we thank you because you have spoken to our hearts tonight. In times like these, when there are so many difficulties, when there are so many hardships, in times like these, when movement is even poor, it's even difficult from one place to the other. In times like these, when many people are not sure of what they are going to eat. In times like these, when the devil is losing we pray you will always make us to walk with the eyes of the eagle always looking beyond always looking to the future knowing that the things that are really essential in the light of eternity, in the light of the Word of God, in the light of spiritual matters, those are the things we are to get involved in. And therefore, Lord, we pray you help us that we will be wise. Wise for the salvation. Wise because of the time in which we are living. That, Lord, we will not allow the difficulties and the dangers and the opposition and the misrepresentation or whatever to hinder us from making use of our lives to the glory of God in Jesus' name. We well, thank you for the grace you have given us. That we are able to even come here tonight. When many people were not able to go to their places of work today, Yet, the Spirit of God is ringing a bell in our heart, telling us that we are men and women of another world, men and women of another kingdom, and we are here by divine appointment. We are here for a purpose. We are here for a mission. And the Lord will pray that our hearts will never forget the purpose and the mission for which we are here in Jesus' name. We know Satan will fight, but he will not prevail. We know that the people who are submitted to the devil, we know they will fight, but they will not prevail. We have given our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. We have promised you we are going to serve you to the very end. Whatever may happen, O oh Lord, we renew our consecrations again in Jesus' name. Lord, we know that the establishment of the district church is the hand of God. On a day like this, in a time like this, no petrol, no transportation, no freedom of movement very easily. If we did not decentralize, if we were still to be coming here centrally every time, everybody, how will people be able to continue to hear the word of God? But you gave us the wisdom at the right time. 
and you place the cell in every district. At that time, we didn't know that we'll be able to get enough coordinators, get enough women coordinators, get enough zonal leaders, get enough women representatives, and get enough workers and leaders. But here we are today. You have given us a work to do in every district. And this is a time we need more consecration. A time we need more commitment. Because this is a time we really see now the need of the district church. Therefore, Lord, we pray that all the discouragement that the devil may bring, all the hindrances the devil may bring, we are, we are going to overcome in Jesus' name. This single life we have will be spent to the glory of God. More souls for the saved. More believers to be sanctified. More sanctified people will be baptized in the Holy Ghost. The sick will be healed. Your prayers will be delivered. And many in their multitudes will be prepared for heaven. Father, we pray, yes, everyone here tonight, that none of us will ever listen to the devil. They would like to whisper to us, they would like to tell us, we shouldn't do that good thing, we shouldn't that do that spiritual thing, we shouldn't spend all our time doing this and doing that. The devil is a liar. We are going to stand on the truth. And we're going to stand on our commitment and consecration. Lord, we pray, as you have helped us in the past, continue to help us in Jesus' name. So that every one of us will serve you to the very end. And none of us will lose our reward in Jesus' name. Father, we pray that for all of us who are here, whatever tactics, whatever strategy the devil is trying to use to make us less useful to the Almighty God. We take authority over the devil in Jesus' name. Give us more strength. Give us more grace. Increase our love. Increase our faith that in this generation, in this generation, for this country, for the continent of Africa and for many other parts of the world will do something that goes on record in the book of God. As we go home, help us. Father, we pray that they will never lose their reward. And that we will not stop working for you until that final day. The day of friends is coming. The day of reward is coming. But today is a day of service. And whatever difficulty, whatever problem, we will serve you to the best of our ability. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen.